Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am actually driving, but not to school. And I'm not actually driving because that would not be safe. Be no. safe, kids. I am Pastor Goodman, the content executive for Higher Things. And joining me is El Presidente, Pastor Dwayne Bomsch. How are you today? Doing fantastic. And yourself? I'm doing all right. You're getting ready to, to fly out on vacation, but I appreciate you before you go. We're going to talk about uh, what's coming up here in in church. Uh, so everybody's kind of breathing in after Easter. We're ready for it. What, what do we got coming this Sunday? This Sunday uh, with our, with our three-year series, like we talked last week a little bit about how the, the readings shift in the three-year series to, to, you know, Acts, Revelation, and, and John's gospel. Um, and so this week we've got uh, a resurrection appearance of Jesus by the Sea of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Gennesaret or whatever they're calling it this week, right? Um, and so the disciples are out fishing, right? Because they don't know what to do. Jesus is raised from the dead. He's off wandering around somewhere doing something, and they're not sure exactly what to do. So it's like, we do know how to go fishing, so let's go fishing. Um, and they spend the night fishing, and they don't catch anything. And there's a I can random, yeah. And as a random dude shows up on the on the shore and says, hey, drop your nets on the right side. And and, and all of a sudden, 153 large fish, which uh, we're not even going to talk about the 153 fish, because that's 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 a that's a rabbit trail that takes. You don't want to dive down that days to suss out. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the fun thing is uh, because it is John's gospel and John. Uh, my favorite gospel of the four, if you have to pick one, um, John is, is mine. And, and what's, what's fun is, you know, if you talk about John um, and you look closely at John's gospel, you do see uh, there's some themes that show up a lot, you know, darkness, light, um, daybreak, you know, and, and this is what, it, what John says here, just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Um, you know, and what was happening when on Easter morning, you know, Mary met Mary and the, and the other ladies are getting to the tomb you know, just as day was breaking. They're seeing this. Uh, so there's a little bit of that resonance that John is doing going there. You know, they, they had fished all night long. They're in the dark and they catch nothing. You know, there's, so there's a little bit of that. John is using darkness as misunderstanding as the place of chaos as the place of sin and you know and light is the place where where truth is revealed um so you know it's, it's sunrise and go you know drop the net on the right side to get 153 fish they come to the shore you know peter sees peter recognizes that it's jesus and so he dives in uh, and swims to shore and and then the what's really kind of what, what my focal point is for this, this Sunday is, is what happens after that. Um, John writes, when they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. And um, the interesting thing about that is there's only two places in the Gospels where a charcoal fire is specifically mentioned. And it's here in John 21. And then it's also in John 18 which if you remember from the Good Friday reading of John's, uh, John's passion narrative, the charcoal fire is the place where Peter is warming himself while Jesus is inside being questioned. And the other thing that happens at that charcoal fire is Peter denies Jesus three times. Just as Jesus had said he would, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times, which he does. And then the rooster crows and he realizes what he's done. And so here, Jesus reveals himself to the disciples, and he's by a charcoal fire. And, you know, if you, um, you know, memories can be triggered by certain things, right? You can, yeah. you can sound will trigger memories, smells will trigger memories, um, and, and sights. And here's Jesus next to a charcoal fire, um, and what comes, what comes after this is that Jesus asked Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he says, yes, Lord, you know, I love you. Feed my lambs. He says a second time, Simon, do you, do you love me? 
Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. He says to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter's grieved because he asked him three times. And he says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. So you have Peter by a charcoal fire denying that he even knows Jesus three times. And now Peter's by a charcoal fire again. And the Jesus that he denies is standing with him, asking if he loves him and, and commissioning him to go and, and feed my sheep. So there's, he denies Jesus three times, rejects him publicly, um, recognizes his failure in, in, the, in the hours and, and, and time that follows that. And now that risen Jesus is standing here and, and restoring him. Because he's not just grilling him, you know, Peter, do you really love me? Do you really, are you sure you're supposed to be here? Um, but you, knew, you know that I love you, Lord. Okay, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. There's a, there's a job for you. And then it continues, of course. Um, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk where you wanted to go. Now that you're old, you will stretch out your hands. Another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And he said this by what kind to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And then he says to him, follow me. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit of a premonition of, of Peter's martyrdom there. Yeah. Um, but the, the point there is, Peter, you rejected me. You denied me. You, you said you didn't even know me. Yet I still love you. Yeah. I'm restoring you. Because you're my, you are my child, and I have a mission for you. And you will go forth in my name and, and call others to faith. Because the gospel is too big uh, for your rejection to get in the way. You've repented. You're restored. That's so such a it, terribly profound thing. And it, it completely changes it to, if you really love me, prove it by when you connect it to the, the first charcoal fire, where it, it really does show that there is still a place for Peter in God's, in God's kingdom and a, a vocation for Peter um, that, that's not sullied by his, by his sins. Um, that, that Peter, who is, like you said, repentant, hoping for, for forgiveness, looking for mercy, and, and desperate at this point in time to prove it, actually is, is saying, you don't have to prove it. This is just what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How badly, how badly can you screw up and God still loves you? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Jesus himself says, you know, whoever, you know, if you deny me before men, you are done. Mm -hmm. And Peter denied Jesus before men. But he realized what he had done. He repents of it. He is sorrowful for it. And he's restored. The right. sin is forgiven. It's it's such an important thing because we we do just sort of have a, a way of letting that that guilt take over our, our lives, take over the way that we view our vocations, take over everything. And I, I mean, we you talked about the the idea that um, we would be taken back by certain sights or smells for for good or for bad. That that the reality is, Peter probably has some PTSD from the passion and it's, it's not for now. It's, it's maybe even for later for when he's about to die, the death that he was to die, that he can actually reflect upon the second charcoal fire and actually find comfort in the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it's how this is the promise that the Lord gives that, that he has called us by name. And it, it almost becomes, you know, this, you know, I've done something that's so terrible. It, it becomes a first commandment issue. Hmm. You know, th there's no way that God is powerful enough. There's no way that God can forgive me. I, I, what I did was so terrible and bad. Not even God can fix it. Right. Really? And he's yeah. still risen from the dead. So Jesus, I, yeah, he's I'm still risen. Yeah. That's really, that's profound. That's, that's wonderful. Um, and then, so we're, we're not then just dealing with a God who needs to prove that he is risen, but, but a God who actually needs to prove for Peter that he is risen. 
And, and that connection is is really important, I think, too, to, to maybe touch upon. A, a, a Christ who is risen from the dead is, is a wonderful thing, but a Christ who is risen for sinners, for Peter's right. family. Jesus is risen. That's great. Jesus is risen for me even better. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's a great reason to go to church just to hear that one. So uh, kids go to church on Sunday and hear more about this. Thanks so much, Pastor, for joining us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Peace be with you. Have a great day and also with you. Thank <laughs> you.